And welcome to Skag Product Updates. Uh, looks like we have a lot to talk about in this area, Dennis. Oh, we do. We have a, we have a, every year we spend quite a bit of time on product updates and improvements. Um, and again, just like I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. things that customers are, are asking for. So we do have a, a wealthy portion of it. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's talk about debris product updates. All right. Okay. I think we were supposed to have a video for that, but uh, why, okay. yeah, why don't we'll you just, tell us a little we'll bit about it, it there. and we can all show the video later. Thanks, Lee. Uh, for debris products, uh, wheel blowers and truck lowers, really not a whole lot of changes for that for 2021, so you won't see much uh, in, as far as those are concerned. Windstorm-wise, uh, we did make some changes uh, earlier this year in spring. We did some modifications to the NDS nozzle system and did some modifications there to help with some uh, issues that customers were reporting in regards to binding. So I uh, implemented that in spring. Going forward, we're going to have uh, some other updates that we're looking at right now that we're testing in the field. We'll see how those go. And if that proves out like we believe it will, we'll get those implemented uh, in the near future. And I believe we do have a windstorm video here, so let's uh, take a look at that. Yeah. Prepare yourself for the windstorm. This windstorm will deliver extremely high multi-directional air output, driven by massive horsepower. We'll be traveling at highly productive ground speeds and will be accompanied by unmatched comfort, toughness, and performance. This is the Skag Windstorm. Designed with both the job and the operator in mind, the Windstorm stand-on blower will completely blow away any old ways of thinking about leaf and debris management. The Windstorm's exclusive nozzle direction system allows for easy adjustment of nozzle rotation and tilt right at the operator's fingertips, giving you unprecedented horizontal and vertical control of the airflow to ensure thorough cleanup. Whether you're clearing a sidewalk or cart path, preparing asphalt for seal coating, or cleaning up leaves in the fall. And like all Skag products, the Windstorm is backed by a strong warranty. The Skag Windstorm. See your local Skag dealer today to learn more and experience the Skag difference for yourself. And the last thing I'll say about the Windstorm is, is proving to be a very productive category for us and a lot of growth hopefully coming with that. Uh, we actually do have a uh, landscaper down in Texas that does a large HOA with a windstorm that he replaced four to five guys with backpack floors. So very, very, very productive unit. So just absolutely Sounds love like it. it. The so. amount of feedback we get similar to that online, speaking from the social side of things that I can speak to with dealing with that, um, countless stories of that. People using it year round, not just in the fall time. I mean, one of my personal stories too is the video you saw there was at my parents' house. Mm. And prior to working at Skag, that project for my dad, my mother and I was a, uh, let's get some tarps and some rakes and let's get it done over a few weekends. Not a fun <laughs> thing to do. Um, There's probably about 12 man hours to get that done. Um, never fun. Started at Skag before the windstorm came out. We had the push blower, so I brought two of those homes and we cut it down to four to five hours. Then the sure. windstorm came out and I've never felt my dad give me as hard of a hug before because we got that project <laughs> done in about 30 minutes. And uh, 30 minutes. talk about productivity right there. It's Absolutely. pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. pretty That's amazing. fantastic. So let's talk about walk behinds. Absolutely. All right, walk behinds. Uh, for 2021, uh, not a whole lot of changes, but we'll kind of go through them here little by little. 
Uh, right now, currently for Skag, we have three walk behinds uh, that we offer the SW belt drive walk behind, and then the two hydro walk behinds, the SWZ and SWZT. Uh, for those three models, there's going to be a new fuel tank uh, on those. As you'll see going forward, Dennis will talk about that a little bit more uh, here in a little bit when he gets on to the turf storm. Uh, with us today in the room, we have the new SWZT48H-15FSE, so it's an electric start Kawasaki. That will be replacing the 15-horse uh, recoil start that we offered previously. So you'll see that coming down the road. And then with all the other electric start models that we have, there's a larger capacity battery on that as well, very similar to what you see on the SWZ, along with uh, the other sit-down products and stand-on products. So a little bit better load capacity for that battery going forward. Uh, minor change to the transaxle, which Jake will get into here shortly when he starts talking about the Liberty, Freedom, and Patriot. Uh, in addition to that, he will also talk about the rebranding of the cutter deck itself. So, so a lot of nice little uh, features that we've kind of upgraded and improved and some name changes. So outside of that, it's pretty much what you've been seeing. So with exciting. that, I'll, I'll pass that off to, uh, to Jake to go over the Liberty, Freedom, and Patriot. Sounds great. Thanks, Pat. So here today we have the Freedom Z and Patriot. We do not have a Liberty in the room today. Um, but a change that we have coming to Liberty Z on the 60-inch cutter deck, that is going to be going to a 24-horsepower Kawasaki FR series engine for 2021. Again, as Dennis mentioned, probably won't be at your dealership quite yet, but uh, stay tuned for that making its way in the coming months. Also on that machine, the what used to be an optional uh, accessory is the cutter deck transport lock. So you'd be able to kick that deck all the way up and it'll lock into place with that tool. That is now going to come standard, um, standard feature for all Liberty Z's from the bottom of the lineup all the way up for 2021. And that kind of covers what we have changing on the Liberty Z. Um, shifting over here to the Freedom Z, we'll start with the engine on this machine. Uh, here today we have a 52 inch. The 48 and 52 inch machine are going to be upgrading the horsepower on their Kohler 7000 series pro filtration models. Um, so same engine, um, same category of engine, the 7000 series, but the 48 is going to be going from a 22 horsepower to a 24 horsepower. And the 52 that you see here today is going to go from a 24 to a 26 horsepower. So just a little bit more horsepower we're bringing to this package. Um, this has been a real great engine for this uh, particular setup. Um, so that extra horsepower, we're really excited about that. Um, some things you're going to see on all of these models with the transaxle moving forward, as Pat mentioned, is the uh, standalone hydro reservoir. That is now going to be an integrated system into the transaxle. So what you're going to do there, you're going to uh, make it a little bit less complex in the hydro system. You're going to clear up a lot of plumbing, and by doing that, you're opportunity for leak points is going to be greatly reduced. It's going to be a much cleaner unit underneath, so it's going to be much easier to do oil changes. You're going to have more accuracy and more consistent in that, eliminating potentials for overfilling the system. So nice upgrades that we're seeing there on all of these models um, to the Hydrogear transaxle. So thank you to Hydrogear for allowing us to do that. Then shifting over here to the Patriot model, we'll start right here with the control levers. Uh, these look very much the same as they used to, but these are actually now the same control levers that we previously had and still use on the Freedom Z. So why the change there? Recently, when we went to the suspension seat on the Patriot, the overall profile of the operator as they're on that seat was raised, and the old style arms that we had on there for some of the taller gentlemen like myself, not someone like Pat really wouldn't have to worry about that being a little shorter. Thanks Sorry, Pat. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> You'd have some leg clearance issues when you're fully extended. We heard that from some taller operators. So by going to that style with the higher profile um, arm, those taller operators, we weren't hearing that as much, or we, we shouldn't hear that as much. So nice upgrade there. Another real big thing that's probably catching your eye here on both of these machines is the, uh, the fuel tank on them. So what we did there is the, the tool on this tank, that, the tool that makes these tanks, was running into the end of its useful life. 
So we use that as an opportunity to give it a new look and kind of, in my eyes, take this redesign that we had last year by going to the blackout edition and really bring it full circle. So we took the tank that we have over on the Cheetah 2 and re re reworked that, shrunk it down a little bit, adjusted it as needed um, to fit this package on the Freedom and Patriot. Gives it a nice aggressive sharp look. Um, so you got the nice orange inset, your branding right here a deeper cup holder on this tank, and then on the opposite side on the control panel, you'll see an area for your, uh, your cell phone or any other small storage that you might need. So nice upgrades come to that fuel tank, and again, it really just cleans up that picture, or cleans up the uh, look of the machine, gives it a sharp, aggressive look. And one thing that I did leave out from earlier, and Pat touched on this, the SWZT, the Liberty Z, the Freedom Z, and the Patriot, those are all going to now have a branded cutter deck. As you can see right here, here's the logo on that cutter deck. So nothing has physically changed on this cutter deck. You know, when this cutter deck originally came out, it came out originally just on the Freedom Z. That was the only model that was using it at the time. And we never had a name for it. Um, for whatever reason, just never got named. We often heard, to it, heard it referred to as the Freedom Deck, because that was the first machine it was on. We hear it called the bull, Bullnose Deck, the Commercial, the Standard Deck, the one that's not the Velocity Plus, many different things. So we gave it a little bit more credibility, because it's a great performing deck. It's obviously being used in a lot more places than it used to be. And uh, that will be the Hero Deck moving forward. So again, that kind of wraps up what we're looking at at the Liberty Z, Freedom Z, and Patriot. And uh, we'll shift it back over to uh, Matt, I believe, with V-Ride updates. I'd like to share with you today about some uh, product updates and product improvements we've made on our V-Ride lineup. Uh, first, I'll be talking about uh, three new engine offerings that we have for this year. Uh, the first is on our 52-inch model. We're going to be offering a Kawasaki FT730. That's an uh, EFI engine. That's 26 horsepower. Uh, we've had that on our Tiger Cat now for the last couple of years, and it's been well received. Uh, it's been a strong performer, so we think it'll do well on V-Ride as well. Uh, also for the 52, which I have next to me here, is a 37-horse uh, Briggs Vanguard EFI. Uh, let me be the first to say we heard you loud and clear when you wanted more horsepower on the 52-inch decks. Uh, last year, we had it on the 61s, and it wasn't too shortly after we heard about, you know, requests for it on the 52. Now, we've, we've had it on test for some time, and that was due to the fact that, uh, although we had it on the 61 model, the 52's got a couple challenges to it. It's a shorter uh, drive belt for the cutter deck, and shorter belts don't like shock loads as much as, as a longer belt. And so what we did to, to really address that uh, was to add a, a, a Gura a soft start clutch module. That works with the clutch. So when you pull the PTO up to engage your blades, um, it, really, it, it really feathers the clutch on and, uh, over like a period of a second or half a second. And that really extends your belt life by, you know, by really uh, limiting the shock load to the, to the belt system. Uh, and so... That, that software module was used on our windstorm in previous years, uh, and it works so well in this 52-inch 37, we're going to add it to all of our 37 and up horsepower V-rides uh, for the coming models, which leads me to my next uh, engine I want to tell you about, and that is on our 61-inch model. We're going to be going to a 38 uh, Kawasaki FX1000 EFI engine. Uh, that's a new engine for Kawasaki. It features their electronic throttle control, and what that does, it... Uh, it keeps your engine RPM up as your load increases. And that's really gonna, you're really gonna notice that in heavy, wet grass, your blade, your blade speed's not gonna slow down. Which it's gonna leave you with a better quality of cut. Uh, you can be more productive during the day because of, because of that. And so now I wanna move and talk about some features on the machine. Uh, this year, we've blacked out a few components for some aesthetic, aesthetic uh, looks. So we look at the caster fork down here. We've got, we've made that a black textured part or black crinkle part. Uh, similar to what we did on the, the Cheetah 2 and the, and the Turf Tiger 2 last year, so we're getting the same treatment here on the V-Ride. Also, if you look at the deck lift link, uh, last year this, uh, this was Cat's Eye Gold. It's, it's black texture as well this year. It kind of complements the machine. It complements the, uh, the muffler guard here uh, over the uh, muffler. And so that's, that's kind of a nice, a nice look you know, to the machine. 
So we go to the back, uh, the operator station. You notice here in the uh, decal in the dash panel, we've got a, a dotted circle there with the, with the words 12 volt below it, or 12V below it. Uh, that is an accessory plug that you can purchase at your Skag dealer. So we added a cutout to the panel and to accept, uh, to accept this new plug. And really all the, all the operator has to do is go to a Skag dealer, uh, purchase the plug, uh, come back and you trim the decal out to expose the hole underneath. Uh, you pop it in and you plug it in your harness and now you've got a 12 volt outlet for charging cell phones and other devices that you might have with you. Uh, and speaking of cell phones, uh, we've also added a, a mesh pocket here to the side of the pad. Uh, works great because everybody's carrying cell phones with them. Um, this really came about uh, last year at GIE, uh, the expo show. Uh, I was working the outside demo booth and a young couple came up to us, or came up to me, and uh, it was a husband and wife, and she was the primary operator of the, of the V-Ride, and she, she went on about how she loved the V-Ride so much. She, I mean, she really she just couldn't stop raving about it, but she said, you know what, I wish I had a place to store my cell phone. And so it kind of got us thinking about it, and so we came back and worked with our pad supplier, and this is what we came up with to hold, you know, like I said, cell phones are really handy in there, water bottles, other things that you might need to put in there, you know, uh, some, some debris you pick off the, the garden or the, the, the lawn or whatever you, you have. So uh, that's a nice, that's a nice add-on uh, for another creature comfort. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about some of the upgrades made to the hydraulic system on this machine. Uh, we use Parker wheel motors. Uh, they're the, they're the uh, next size up from what we've had previously. Uh, the current models use a Parker, uh, I believe it's a TJ series motor. Uh, while we went, so we went up to the next size up. It's the next family of, of motors up. It's a TG. It's the same displacement, but it's got larger, a larger diameter to the, to the body of the motor. It's got larger internals, and it's got a, most importantly, it's got a higher pressure rating. And what that allowed us to do was to use a, a, a higher pressure shock valve in our pumps. Our hydrogear pumps now have a, a higher pressure shock valve in them. And this, this allows the, press, the system to run at a higher pressure. Higher pressure is allowed the, uh, the, really the engine to transmit more power to the wheels. And this is gonna help you when you're, when you're climbing hills, especially when you're loaded up heavy with a grass catcher accessory, you know, full of wet, wet um, bags, uh, wet grass in your bag. So I think it'll, it'll really help there on the hillsides. Uh, if we move around to the back of the machine, uh, we're, we're proud of our spacious operator platform. Uh, Previous models used the steel springs on either side to provide uh, suspension for the operator, soak up the bumps. You can see here, uh, you got a good travel there. Uh, these springs have, have been great for us over the years. But one thing we wanted to do was to add some adjustability to the system. So we replaced these two steel springs here with, with two of these uh, style springs. This is an uh, ISO elastomer spring. Uh, so it not only gives you the same travel that we've had, but it also does uh, absorb some vibrations. Uh, these bigger engines, you know, a little more vibration to them, so it help really reduce that and isolate that vibration so the operator doesn't feel it on its feet. Uh, and I talked about adjustment. So here we have three holes you can see in this plate. This uh, elastomer spring mounts to one of these three holes depending on the operator's preference. Uh, if you use the front hole, it'll give you a, a softer ride. Uh, if you want a firmer ride, you just go back a one hole or two holes and the back hole will give you the firmest ride. So depending on the weighted operator and really his preference on how stiff he wants that operator platform to feel, he's really got that control now. In addition to that, uh, this plate can be removed from the system and this spring can be bolted right to the chassis. And what that'll do, it'll lower the operator's platform about an inch. And so it gives you the, the operator to you know, sit down about an inch lower in the machine. Uh, it changes the angle of his, of, his, of his ankles and his feet, which allow him to kind of, his knees to hit the pad just a little different, differently like I said, it's really up to the end user and what he feels most comfortable when he's running, running the machine. So that about does it for the VRED updates. I'll pass it on to, uh, I think it's Jake, for the next, next uh, uh, segment, the cheetahs and turf tigers. Thanks, Matt. So now to go to the cat portion of the lineup, tiger, cat, cheetah, and turf tiger. Um, right up front, not a huge amount of changes that we're bringing out this year, um, but we'll go through a, through a few of them, starting with the tiger cat that we have here today. Um, similar to what Matt described on the V-Ride with the blacked out components and something that was done last year with the turf tiger and the cheetah, done the same thing with the uh, tiger cat too. 
by adding some blacked out components to the front caster yokes on either side, and then the deck lift linkages, those have been blacked out as well, as well as those control brackets um, right at the base of the control arms. So again, same thing, you're just trying to, we're trying to break up some of that cat's eye gold a little bit, um, catch your eye a little bit, give it a little bit of a showroom appeal. Uh, we never really anticipate the cat portion of the lineup to go full-fledged blackout like you see on the Freedom Patriot and the Liberty Z. Uh, but adding some nice accents will definitely give it a nice, uh, nice look and appeal. Uh, one thing we do want to mention is that the 52-inch uh, Tiger Cat with the 26-horsepower Kawasaki FT EFI engine, uh, that was brought out last year as a promo model, and that will be sticking around as a promo model for 2021. So, you know, we saw a lot of great traction in the field with that. It was a really great performing engine with a lot of torque. Um, so that's going to remain as a promo model for 2021. And just kind of as a reminder, too, and I believe uh, Dennis might run this model at home, maybe Matt. Um, but the Tiger Cat 2 last year, we also came out with the 32 horsepower Briggs Vanguard engine on there. And that's on the 61 inch deck. Uh, that's been an awesome machine for us, especially in the upper east, east coast where there's a lot of bagging going on. Um, if you are in the 60 inch, 61 inch range um, on your Tiger Cat, uh, having that high, high capacity horsepower, um, really gonna help with the bagging of the, thing, of the machine, as well as for those individuals that are running uh, mulch kits full time. That extra torque and extra horsepower really add a lot of strength to that package. That's right, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I run a Tiger Cat at home and I have a mulch kit on mine, and that 32 two horse makes really short work of the, my yard. It just has the power to get through the thick stuff. And you mulch year round, don't you, Matt? That's right, yep. Yep, awesome, awesome. I bet your lawn looks great. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. We, we have not as good as mine, but not as good as Pat's and, and yeah, Jake's, but I, you know, I'm it's trying. It's mediocre at best, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's not because okay. of the cut, it's because of, well, it's Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Operator. Operator <laughs> error. But uh, then shifting actually up yes. to the uh, Cheetah 2. Uh, the Cheetah 2 is going to be featuring, similar to the V-Ride again, the Kawasaki FX1000 series engine, new engine for Kawasaki this year. Mm. That is a 38 horsepower engine. It's going to be, be available on the 61 inch cut, the 72 inch cut, and at a later date, the rear discharge mm. machine as well. That one's going to be um, a little bit of a wait yet, but going to be a nice, again, nice horsepower increase on that machine. Going to really pack the punch. We've had that out at uh, Road America, one of our main test facilities uh, the past year or so. I'm putting a lot of hours on it and it's really living up to uh, the hype. We're really excited to add that engine to the Cheetah as well as the V-Ride, which Matt covered earlier. And then finally, uh, the Turf Tiger 2. We don't actually have one here today. Um, no real changes coming in 2021. Uh, always looking at minor things we can do on the machine. Um, last year we introduced the 31 Vanguard to that uh, model on the 52 and 61. That's been performing really well for us out in the field. Um, good feedback on that. And, you know, just kind of to wrap up, um, big picture on all the mowers that you've seen so far, or the truck loaders or blowers or things that aren't here today. Um, Dennis kind of touched on this at the beginning. Feed us your feedback. Um, Absolutely. Whether it's via social media, if you're an end user and you want to see XYZ feature on the Tiger Cat or this new engine on the V-Ride, like Matt kind of joked at and teased at, uh, we heard pretty hot and heavy mm -hmm. about the 37 Vanguard on that 52 inch. Continue to feed that to your dealers. If your dealers um, that are watching this, feed that to your distributor reps. Uh, when your rep is in town, shoot them an email. Um, distributors, feed that information to us. We meet with them once a year to get really in-depth, but we have a constant line of communication with them. And you know, in order for us to continue to push our lineup um, forward, we rely on the feedback from you guys. And whether it's a minor change and you're posting about it on our, on our Facebook group, Skag Nation, or something that's big, uh, we always have eyes on it, so uh, it, it, we bring it up in our quarterly product development meetings, and that's something that's uh, really neat to see happen. Um, like I said, minor changes, big changes, never falls on deaf ears and never goes uh, unnoticed. So Correct. that kind of covers uh, the updates on the product end um, for 2021. So Dennis, anything else you want to add to all this? This is a lot of product updates. It's, you know, that's pretty much uh, the norm for us. Um, just like Jake said, we, we listen to our customers. You know, you heard what Matt said about that 37 big block on a 52 and the electric start on the SWZT and the big horsepower on the Cheetahs and the promo models. These are things that we, we take from our customers. Um, as a manufacturer, uh, for the dealers that have been out in our plant, 
we could build whatever we want. Um, you heard from Mike Gamache earlier about the, the things that they offer and the things that they could do. As a manufacturer, we could do whatever we want. Does it mean that's what our customers want? We look at it as we want to build the products our dealers want, that our dealers want to sell, that our customers want to buy. Because ultimately, when a customer buys it from our dealers, dealers are going to come back and reorder it. So that's what we're focusing on, is making sure that we are offering the products that, are, that our dealers are looking for and our customers want to buy. You guys are responsive to, 100%. Your, to your customers. Always are. And we're always, we got we're got always a few, listening. Uh, few good new products coming up after the break uh, that a lot of people have been asking for as well. Absolutely. Okay. It's, been, it's been a while coming, especially on this first one and um, the turf storm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it got a lot of excitement coming up uh, right after the break. Excellent. Absolutely. Sounds good. Well, we will close out Skag Live with the new products introduction. And uh, coming up right up, your first look at the new Turf Storm. And you will also get to see our 30-inch commercial mower. Stay with us. <laughs>